What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, we're just gonna create a fun spiraling ribbon structure within SketchUp. Um, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to, uh, to provide a complete training experience for SketchUp. So um, it's basically a start to finish course. It'll teach you everything from the basics all the way through advanced modeling techniques like modeling for interior design and layout. So if that's something you're interested in checking out, make sure you visit that link at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to do this, you're gonna need a couple extensions, which I will link to down in the notes below. You're gonna need Helix Along Curve. You're gonna need Curve Aloft. You're gonna want Selection Toys by TomTom. And you're also gonna want the extension Lines to Tubes. All right, so to start off, we're gonna create our spiraling shape. And it's basically just a ribbon. So it's basically a helix that just goes one rotation along a length. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line, and that's gonna be the length of our helix. So in this case, I'm gonna draw a line from my origin point using the line tool, 150 feet. So now I have a 150 foot long line right here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna use the extension helix along curve in order to create a helix that spins around this line. So in this case, you're just gonna come in and you're gonna set your radius to start and your radius to finish at 35 feet. And we're gonna go ahead and tell it to have one lap and we're gonna tell it to have 24 sections per lap. And this is gonna be important later. Remember the number that you put in here because it's also the number of segments that your circle is gonna need to have. But uh, everything else should be fine. Um, you can set it to no tube for right now. Um, you could set this to create a tube along this radius as well. Um, in this case, I'm probably not gonna do that, we'll just create that later. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a single spinning helix around this circle. And so now what we need to do is we need to create a copy of this. So to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and explode this. Um, I don't want this in here as a group anymore, so just right click and click the option for explode um, when this is in a group. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this helix. So I'm gonna select my line, tap the M key, click on this point, and then I'm gonna tap the control key to turn copy mode on. And basically, I'm just gonna use this, I'm gonna allow this to inference on the green axis, and I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock it to that axis. Then I'm just gonna move my mouse to the halfway point of this helix. And so once you've moved this to the halfway point of this helix, what you can do is you can just draw a line from this point to this point, and from this point to this point. And basically what you've done is you've created a complete frame in here, and now you can use the extension Curve Aloft to come in and create a skin on that frame. So I'm just gonna triple click on one of these lines, and that's gonna select all of the lines within SketchUp. And I wanna go up to Curve Aloft, and I wanna use this last option, which is Skin Contours. And so what Skin Contours does is that'll come in here and that'll create a skin along this face and this works really well because each one of these has the same number of segments and you so you can see when it comes in here and it creates your line it's just basically coming in here and creating lines across all of your different segments in order to create this face and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click to create that face and so curve aloft has created that face and you can see that that comes in as a group and so for now I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide that um, we'll come back and we'll unhide it in a second, but what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to create my frame along this helix. And so basically what we want to do in this case is I think for now I'm just going to create a tube along these two lines. So I'm just going to select these lines. I'm going to click on one. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click on the other. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the extension lines to tubes, which I will link to down below. Basically what that does is that just creates tubes along these lines. So it's like extruding a circle along these lines. Um, and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set these to, we'll make these a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna set these with a diameter of 24 inches and I'm gonna give them a precision of eight. And the precision is just the number of segments that are in the circle that's created that extrudes along here. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit okay. 
And so you can see what that did is that created two tubes along this path. And so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to hide those tubes. And then the last thing I'm going to do, because I want to get this geometry out of the way, but I don't necessarily want to delete it yet, but right now it's going to kind of get in the way. So I'm just going to make that a group by right clicking and clicking make group. And I'm going to go in the outliner and I'm just going to rename this frame so that I know what it is and then I'm going to hide it. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to unhide. We're going to call this skin. I'm going to unhide the skin in here so that I can come in here and I can create my other piece of structure. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to double click inside this group and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a circle. And so in this case, I made sure to start my line at the origin point. That way we know that this curve is centered on the origin. But now I can come in here with the circle tool and I activate the circle tool by tapping the C key and then I tap the left arrow key to lock it to the green axis. And so now we can just create our circle and we're going to give it the same radius as our skin in here has. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to select this object and you can see how, whoops, I accidentally didn't put this inside the group so I'm just going to do a control X to cut it. I'm going to double click inside my group and then I'm going to do an edit paste in place. And what that does is that paste this in the same location, but now it's pasted in this group. All right. So once we've created our circle, what we want to do is we want to copy it along this face because we're going to use that to create our guide points for our structure. And so the spacing on this one is going to be really important. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the array function of the move tool in copy mode. So basically what that means is we can create multiple different copies of this. And if you remember this line that we created is made up of 24 segments and our circle here, also needs to be set to 24 segments. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the move tool in copy mode and we're going to create copies basically at every one of these segments. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us our framework. And so if you see right here, if I um, use the move tool and I move it over this, you can see how it's inferencing to the different segment points and it does the same thing on our spiral as well. And so what we want to do in this case is we want to use the move tool in copy mode. So select this line, activate the move tool by tapping the M key and then tap control and then click on this point. And then you want to make a copy right here at this first segment. And so now what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to create copies all the way along here. And I'm not sure exactly how many of these we need to create. I'm going to go ahead and type times 40 and hit the enter key. So basically what it did is that created 40 copies at that spacing that we set. And so you can see how every one of these, because this circle has the same radius as our ribbon, is splitting this face. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to erase out my circles. Because they've basically done what we want them to do, which is create our framework along this face. And so I'm just going to come in, I'm going to erase these out. And I'm going to go ahead and save my model real quick. And so now what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to select all of these and create pipes along them. And you have to be careful because you don't want to pick up, you don't want to accidentally pick up pieces of the actual helix itself. You literally just want these pieces on the inside um, so that we can create pipes along those. Because if you remember the other ones um, that we selected before are going to have a larger structure piece around them. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second, but I'm going to go ahead and select all of these lines. And you can select these however you want. Um, I have selection toys installed. That's TomTom Tom selection plugin. So if I accidentally pick up some faces, it's okay. I can just right click on that and go down and say deselect faces. And so now what I have is I have my, my basically my lines selected in here. Well, now I can use lines to tubes to create tubes along those lines. And so I'm going to go back to tools, convert art circles lines to cylinders, and I'm going to set the diameter of these to one foot. So if you remember our other ones that we had were two foot, that's why we didn't want to select them in this selection process. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so you can see how what that did is that created tubes along all of these edges. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to select the face. 
and I'm going to apply a glass material just because it shows the structure a little bit better. So if we were to come in and we were to unhide our structure, you can see how now I have basically, I have my, um, my circular framework and I also have my tubes along this helix. And so now if we were to make a copy of this, and we're just going to double click check to make sure everything lines up. You can see how these tubes would line up because we set our spacing correctly. And so in this case, I didn't pick up the edge framing, but that's okay. <coughs> so the last thing I want to do in here is well, I want to go inside this group and I want to add structure running along the edges this way. And so what I did is I went inside my group and I'm just triple clicking on one of these faces. And so when I triple click on this face, basically what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's selecting the faces as well as the geometry that makes up these faces. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide my structure right here just so you can see what's going on. But you can see how I'm inside the group that I created with Curvaloft. So I do a triple click and that selects all of the softened geometry as well as the real geometry in here. Well with selection toys what you want to do is you want to right click and you want to go down and you want to select the option for select only soft edges. And so that allows me to select only the edges that are in here that basically make up my face. And so now I can just come in here and I can just create cylinders along those as well. And so the settings should be the same as the last time. And one thing to know is you probably want to close your outliner when you do this or minimize your outliner. So this doesn't try to update as you add your, as you add your tubes, but we're going to go in and we're going to go and we're going to add that structure here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. And so now it's created these structures along here. And then if I do an edit, unhide, all, I now have my structure running this way and I have my structure running this way. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna continue this along multiple different copies of this spiral. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this geometry. So I'm just gonna click and drag a box around it and I'm gonna deselect this line and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click make component. And we'll go ahead and call this something like spiral piece. And then we'll click the create button. And since this line is already in here, I'm gonna use this as an inference point for my copy. So select your component, activate the move tool and then tap control key to put it in copy mode and then just move your mouse down to the end of this line. And so you can see when I move my mouse down to the end of this line and I click, what this does is this basically lines everything up along my next piece right here. And you can type in like times two or times three so if I type in times three, for example, it makes three copies of this. But you're basically left with your spiraling structure in here. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. Now We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.